Happy New Year, my friends and my family in Christ. I hope this first two and a third days you have seen the activity of God already in this new year. And we come early this year to the temple of the Lord, to the gathering of all that he calls his own, to thank him for his great love. And may it be our pattern this year. Hear this call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. And join me at home as we say, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord has begun. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because of the Lord's great love, we will not be consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning for so great is the Lord's faithfulness. The Lord is good to all those who place their hope in him, to those who seek him. And may we seek him together in worship today. Before we do the congregational prayer together, I just want to remind you that we are Cove Easton in prayer, the middle of this six-week campaign of prayer together, these times of guided prayer. This past week, we were praying for our neighbors, 
And in this coming week, we're praying for our kids as they go back to school, as we're hopeful that they are able to go back to school. And so we ask that you join with us. You got a uh, prayer guide from the church office th uh, today. And we're also reminding you that there are prayer gatherings via Zoom throughout the week that you can come together with a handful of other people to be in prayer. But now let us join our hearts together in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you at the beginning of this new year. And may it be our way this year, coming to you to begin each day. We know that you have promises that you are going to fulfill in this next year, hopes that you are going to help us to realize. But we also know that there will be sorrow that you will help us to bear. And we declare at the threshold of this year that our trust is not in any person, it is not in any man or in any woman, but it is in you alone. And we do not expect at this new year that every prayer of ours will be answered in the way that we would like. For we know you are in control and we release our lives to you. We put our trust in this. That you who have been with us in this past year, Emmanuel, God with us, will be with us in this new year. And it is in you, Emmanuel, that we trust. If you go ahead of us, we will go with you. If you go behind us, we will go. If you lead us in a cloud by day and light the night in its shadows with your fire, we will faithfully follow you. And this is our prayer that in all things that happen this year, we ask that you help us to be aware of your presence, O oh Lord. In this walk, it is by faith and not by sight. So let us perceive your nearness. We know that we will stumble and fall, that we will succeed and triumph. We will la laugh and we will also weep. But in all of those moments, Lord, we pray for a sense of your presence. And if we do not sense your presence, open our eyes to the faith markers of your presence all around us. May the great cloud of witnesses that you have given us in the church carry us towards you until we can see you again. With you, we walk with confidence and trust into this new year. It is in your name we pray, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for a new year. May uh, you uh, be welcome here. We enter here uh, and ask you to be present and to fill us and to be open and to fill our hearts that you may uh, be honored in worship and that we would draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, 2021. Forget the champagne, let's pour out Christ's love. Based on Colossians 3.12. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. So again, uh, good morning. Wishing everybody a happy new year, which I'm sure we've heard quite a bit over the last few days. From an earthly perspective, most of us couldn't be happier to say goodbye to 2020 fast enough. In fact, last summer, there was an Instagram post from David Crowder, and the billboard reads, Gonna ask my mom if that offer to slap me into next year is still on the table. So if this past summer you prayed that prayer or that wish to your mom and all of a sudden you find out that it's January 1st and you felt like you experienced time travel, then welcome to 2021. Newsflash. We have a new president. We have the COVID vaccine. 
and our government stimulus checks are on their way, I hope. But seriously, it's pretty safe to say that the most of us are, are pretty glad to say goodbye to 2020 and look to better times in 2021. But we need to ask, what is this founded on? Is it wishful thinking? Is it hitting life's fast forward button like the 2006 movie Click with Adam Sandler? Or is it a faith-filled, joyful expectation? Did we take last week's message from Carrie to heart, examining 2020 from Jesus' four criteria? Which were, one, do we understand the value of self-examination? Do we understand the value of time? Will we number our days? Three, do our victories exceed our defeats? Did we fight the good fight in 2020? Our spiritual armor. I know my sword needs some sharpening, and my breastplate surely needs a shine. And four, are we living by doing while we anticipate the return of Jesus? Good intentions versus action. And did we fill our lamps with oil in joyful expectation of the return of the bridegroom, Christ Jesus? Personally, in my alone time with God, I believe that 2021 is not going to be better or worse than 2020. Um, it's just going to be different according to his sovereignty and timing. And here's why. In 2020, it was filled with shock and crisis and loss, causing many believers to seek him more deeply as deep calls into deep, which is not a bad thing. Last August, uh, the message I shared was that we're a remnant to consecrate ourselves to God, to ask for an increase in faith, to be steeped in meaningful prayer for the spiritual battle that lay ahead, and to remain in the word of God and to encourage each other to go deeper. We are in unity to remain connected by loving and supporting each other. And then we scattered seeds of God's love across the fields. So in 2021, no matter what it brings, we come with joyful expectation. May we see the spring seeds grow and experience the eventual fall harvest for the kingdom. So, how do we enter 2021 and our New Year's resolutions? May they not reflect the world's view of bigger, faster, stronger, or other grandiose or egocentric pro proclamations. For example, I'm probably never going to be financially rich. I'm never going to be as good looking as Tim Herman. And I'm never going to be the mighty outdoorsman of Carl Otten. We need to know our gifts and use them for God's glory, right? But in all seriousness, these words and themes that I hear as we enter 2021 are threefold. The first theme, a reminder that God is in control. Second, a message of his peace expressed as quiet, soft, and slow. And third, a call to action. We are ambassadors of Christ in watchful expectation of Christ's return. In the first theme, a reminder that God is in control. From Psalm 46, 10, and 11, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This gives us assurance that God is in control, he's unshakable, he's with us always, and he's our fortress and our strength. He protects us 
from the enemy's shooting arrows. And the second theme, not the world's peace, but God's peace that's expressed in quiet, soft, and slow. So where did I get this quiet, soft, and slow theme from? In reflection, God meets us and speaks to us in numerous ways on our travels. For me, it's often through music. So last week, I was driving up to Boston to pick up my daughter, Tori, and I prayed and listened to Christmas music for about two hours, really enjoying and, and getting into God's presence and seeking the word that he has for us to hear today. It wasn't loud thunder, it wasn't grandiose, and it certainly wasn't Elvis Presley singing, I'll have a blue, blue Christmas, and I won't do my Elvis impersonation. However, it was Audrey Assad singing a ballad called Winter Snow, which we sang earlier. Here's some of the lyrics. You could have come like a mighty storm with the strength of a hurricane. You could have come like a forest fire with all the power of heaven in your flame. And then the chorus, our pivot point. But you came like a winter snow. You were quiet, soft, and slow. Falling from the sky in the night, gently to the earth below. Well, that was it. I got my Holy Spirit affirmation. I got my goosebumps, you know, tingling down my back and in my arms. And it hit me. So how did Jesus enter into the new year or into other phases of his ministry? We know God has expressed his power through powerful manifestations and miracles. But in this season, I hear quiet, soft, and slow. And trust me, this runs counter to my type A personality and how my brain is wired. So for quiet and soft, let's look at Jesus' birth. In Luke chapter 2, he says, when Jesus came into the world, it was a new era, a new year. And the inauguration for his ministry and his kingdom come down to earth. He rightfully could have come in all his power, a mighty roar and grandeur of a king, which he is. But he came in the most humblest of ways. A virgin birth, the ancient of days, the incarnation of Christ, divinity and love wrapped in human skin. He was birthed under the stars in a stable with stinky animals laying in a lowly manger. The king of kings lay in a feeding trough. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus enters this new year coming down to earth, quiet, soft, and slow. And as it relates to slow, it's slow by our human terms and our need for instant gratification. Jesus lived with Mary and Joseph, a carpenter, under the radar, off the internet and social media grid, in rural Bethlehem. He did not formally announce his ministry until he was approximately 30 years old, in rural Galilee, not Jerusalem, the city of David, nor Rome. Look at his triumphant entrance into heaven in Matthew 21, our Palm Sunday. For the coming Passover to atone for our sins, Jesus entered Jerusalem from the east gate, the back entrance, riding on a young colt or donkey, not even his own, a symbol of humility. In contrast, Pontius Pilate made a grand entrance into Jerusalem from the west gate, the front entrance. 
He rode in on a powerful white horse with his legions of chariots, horses, foot soldiers, all dressed for battle, armed with swords and spears. Rome's authority would not be questioned or else. Two different kingdoms, the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of earth. In God's mighty hand, which one had more impact? Today, if you look at history, most know of Jesus' entry, but not Pilate's. In Jesus' death and resurrection, his death, full submission to his heavenly Father, crucified on a cross, the lowest of all methods to die, looked on as a criminal, not even human, but an animal to be thrown into the trash pit. His resurrection and ascension, he appears first to a woman, Mary Magdalene, then his disciples, and then after 40 days ascends into the clouds before his believers of the way. But he will return in glory. Amen. The third theme, we are his ambassadors for the kingdom's advance. In Scripture, John 13, 34 and 35, it says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people, not some people, All people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So how can we pivot from 2020 to 2021 for Christ? Well, first, it's not a resolution. It's not a subscription to Amazon Prime. It's not a contract. It's a blood covenant with Christ. Second, may we enter into 2021 like Jesus entered this world. Not bigger, faster, stronger, but quiet, soft, and slow. And yet, with a humble confidence, encouragement, and protection, wrapped in God's steadfast love and the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. Third, May we be fully present in and with the Holy Spirit. This past week, I witnessed the quiet, soft, and yet powerful movement of the Holy Spirit through four family members and their humble yet transformative love offering really moved me. As you know, this Christmas has been quite different compared to all other years, not to state Captain Obvious. We did not host some 50-plus family and friends, as in the past, where I confess I've become wearisome and had lost the true spirit of Christmas. But rather, due to COVID, we gathered in small, uh, immediate family in smaller and simple ways that proved to be very meaningful and intimate. We were more fully present, more connected with each other, We experience an increased awareness of God's goodness and his blessing in all things. We were reminded of our Savior's gift, given an increase in our faith, and lastly, through a set of remote videos of all things, we gathered the family before the TV and we watched together as one the reading of Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 2 from Spencer Soderholm, the Soderholm lollipop machine from Evan Soderholm, virtual Santa and his trusty help, helper, Brian and Kathy, and then concluded with a 20-year medley of Christmas Eves of old. Wow. All that love, the blessings, the reminder that God is in control, the importance of family, our traditions, and most importantly, our Christian identity as his sons and daughters. The Spirit of God was fully present. I want to bring this into 2021, 
just like on the road to Emmaus, were not our hearts burning? And fourth, let's go beyond just being mindful, but have overflowing hearts earnestly seeking to find God at work in our everyday encounters in both the physical and spiritual world through signs and wonders. They're still happening today. Example, the Bethlehem star. 2,000 years ago, again, quietly, softly, and slowly, the lowly shepherds saw the sign and followed the star that led them to the newborn king and paid him tribute. These were extraordinary times. A triple conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn appears in the Middle East in 6 BCE. Eleven months later, in Capricorn, a comet in Capricorn guides the Magi. Spring of 5 BCE, the Savior is born. The star, the event, the sign occurs about every 800 years. Last week, gently and slowly, what some are calling the Bethlehem star came again to show us a reminder of a sign of the Christmas miracle. So those who were not just mindful but seeking saw this and paid tribute, although the world paid little to no attention. Look at the example of the manger 2,000 years ago. What do you see? baby Jesus lying in a manger, which is, I said earlier, an animal's feeding trough. Talk about showing humility. But let's, as we're encouraged to go deeper, what might we see today? Baby Jesus lay inside a cut-out stone manger, not of wood. But as for the foretelling sign of the Lamb of God who would die on a cross. This is based on the Hebrew tradition where a purebred sacrificial lamb would lay in this type of manger when born to one day be sacrificed. The signs are there. Let's go deeper. And the third example is may we never lose our sense of hope and wonder. I've been praying for our hearts to continue to be transformed into Jesus' likeness. Does the wonder of the Christmas epic ever fade? 2,000 years ago, a young girl named Mary encountered an angel of the Lord. She knows the word and the role of a Hebrew woman, and yet she doesn't run away. She asks really good questions. She presses in based on her knowledge of the scriptures and then says in Luke 1, 38, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Wow. In 2021, what if you or I were approached by an angel of the Lord? I have a newsflash. Angels are among us. Just most of them aren't showing off their wings. May we have the courage of Mary for the kingdom's call. In closing, we are Christ's ambassadors. May our everyday service of love from the mundane to the miraculous be expressed as an antidote to this world by loving in humility and the quiet, soft, and slowness of life. You see, meekness does not mean weakness. Rather, it's one willing to share and sacrifice on the behalf of others. In 2021 and beyond, may we align and partner with God until He returns. In the meantime, first, with joyful expectation, let's refill our lamps with holy oil 
in full expectation of the bridegroom's return, Christ our Lord. And second, as we continue to do the action of kingdom ministry, three things. To proclaim the good news to the poor, for the kingdom of God is near. To proclaim liberty to the captives, to set those who are oppressed free. And third, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, a year of jubilee. How often do you think of 2021 and say a year of jubilee, which is the gift of freedom, a new beginning, an opportunity to start over, not earned, but simply given his grace. Let's pray. Dear Lord, may you have all the glory. May we learn from your example what love looks like wrapped in skin and how to sacrificially love those in this broken and hurting world, both inside and outside the church. Amen. It is our privilege this morning to come as believers to the table, to the communion table. And so I invite you, if you haven't had an opportunity to gather the elements at home, pause the video and grab a piece of bread and some juice so you may be able to participate with us this morning. Come, all you who are loved by God. Come and be fed with the food that he gives freely. Come and quench your thirst from the waters of life. Come and may your spirits be filled again with the goodness of our creator. Lord God, giver of all good things, we hear your invitation. We see the gifts of life and grace. And we have come and we have tasted and we know that you are good. Amen. In this time of confession, in the silence, I invite you to bring your confession before the Lord. Lord, we come to you now, and we bring all things before you. O oh God, who embraces us in mercy and acceptance, we recognize those places in our lives where we have been hurt and rejected, and we offer them to you. We recognize those times when we have hurt and rejected others, and we offer them to you. We recognize the ways that we have failed to believe in your forgiving power, in the name of the one who died and who said, Father, forgive them. We pray that you cleanse and heal us and help us to live in the strength that comes from your love. Amen. Come, all you who are loved by God, come to the table of the Lord. Come and eat food with no cost. Come and drink with no money to pay. We come to eat and to drink and our hearts are glad. For we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he showed us his great love. He gathered with this meal with his friends, and during the meal he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks and said, this is my blood, which is shed for you, the new covenant in my blood. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and his love to all. Dear Lord our God, our hearts are glad and we are filled with thankfulness because in your great love you did not abandon us in the dark and fearful places of this world. But in Jesus, you came to us to rescue us, to restore us, and to give us new life. And all of us who are tired and burdened, all who are frightened and unsafe, all who are sick and broken can come and find new life in you. 
Lord, we thank you and ask for your blessings on this bread and on this cup. Amen. Take, eat, and remember this is the Lord's body given to you. Take and drink. This is the Lord's blood that is shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord God of world-changing love, we thank you for this meal and for welcoming us to your table. We remember that we are your children and that you have called us to share your love with everyone that we encounter. Help us to receive your life, to walk in your strength, and to follow your ways in every moment of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.
Father God, we give you all the glory and the praise. In this coming year, we will overcome by your blood and your blood alone. Thank you for your presence with us, Lord. We worship you. Hear us as we sing praises to your name. Sing seated above. Oh 
Lord Jesus, you overcame by your death and resurrection. We love you and we worship you, Lord. May this year be the year of the Lord's favor, the year of Jubilee. In his word, Romans 8, 27 and 28, it states, And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. In 2021, let's follow Jesus' model of humility and meekness and the quiet, soft, and slow in loving and serving the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Mm-hmm.